So let's talk a little more about binary I.O. And Dave, you asked about a checklist about when to use binary and when to use text. So if you use text streams, they can only handle text. If you can, if you use binary streams, then they can handle all the primitive data types. So the binary streams give you much more capability. Also, binary data is a lot more efficient because it doesn't have to do the encoding and the decoding. If you look down in the real uh, deep inside of Java, you'll find out that text streams are actually binary data with the encoding and decoding added on as extra layer. So that just adds more overhead. And another benefit of binary data is it's independent of the encoding scheme. With text, you have to know if you're doing a UTF-8 or a UTF-16 or what, what uh, form, language format you're using. With binary data, it saves it as bytecode in the file. And so any other, your program, no matter where it runs, can still read that, that data no matter what computer it's on. So whenever you do input-output, you're always basically working with data. So here I set up a very important uh, table of database, and I, and I laid out that here we have the ID as an int, our description, which I'm just saying DESC. I'm keeping it really short. That's going to be a type string. Price is float, and quantity is int. And what the program is going to show is how we can write all of these to the disk file and then write and read them back again using binary. Now, notice my test data. Here my ID, I went 1 through 5. Um, when I did my description, I got the words 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 in the description. The price, I did 11, 22, 33, 44, 55. And quantity, I did 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. So when my, I look at my data, if anything is out of alignment, it's going to just pop up right away. I'm not going to have to spend time analyzing it out. Most often when you see examples or when newbies start writing their programs, they just slap any data in at all. But if you do it on a consistent manner like this, when you're looking at your test results, anything that's wrong will pop out just immediately. Nothing can stay hidden. So again, the first thing you want to do is write your scaffolding. And here's the steps we're going to follow. And you probably want to just take these and copy them and paste them into your code as uh, comments. So the first thing we're going to do is set up and populate the data structures. Then open up a data stream for output. Write the data to the file. And then just to, for a proof of concept, we're going to open up a data stream for input and read and display the data from the file. The very first thing you have to do in your program is include the I.O. So we're going to import the Java I.O. package. And that has to be in the very first line of your program. I even put it above any comments that I have in my code. And we're going to add the I.O. exception error on our, on our main um, signature line. So we're going to throw an I.O. exception error. Then inside our main, we're going to declare the data streams and set up a hard-coded file, file name. So here we can see our out file is of type data output stream, and our in file is of type data input stream. So we, we're using the two opposing classes, the input and the output stream. And then just for testing purposes, we're hard coding in the name of our file name. So I'm calling it binary test data dot dat. So six months from now or two years from now, when I look through my disk files, I'll know exactly what's inside that file. Keep in mind, I won't be able to read it directly because it's not text. It's going to be uh, bytecode. And then I set up a series of parallel arrays. So here's my array of floats. This is just capturing my data that was in that table. Here's my array of ints and my array of strings. And again, that's just hard coded in just so I can get my file I.O. working without having to worry about input and output of uh, different kinds of data. 
to open up the data stream, I first I create a file output stream object with my file name, and I feed that into my buffered output stream, which then gets fed into my data output stream. So you can see I have my file output reads to my buffered output stream, which reads to my data output. And then that object becomes my out file. So I have two anonymous objects in here. Now, when you put this code in, you have to put it inside a try-catch. Otherwise, Java won't let you compile. And note how I did my try-catch as reverse indenting, so it's not the predominant thing in the program. I want my, my main code to predominate. So I put my try and catches, I indented those three spaces. So there's my out file. And then I loop through my array, and I'm using my price array to know how many times to loop. They're all parallel arrays, so we could have used any of the three arrays. And then for each item in the array, I output it out to my out file. This is a really great example of parallel arrays. And then I close the file, and then I follow up with my catches. So I catch file not found, and I catch IO exception. Now, if you open up your file in a hex editor, um, this is a shot of the hex editor I have on the Mac, but you can do a Google search and get, there's a lot of hex editors out there. Look for hex editor Windows or hex edit editor Mac. And a hex editor shows you the hex code, also the byte position over in the far left, and then on the right, if it recognizes an ASCII character, then it will display it. So you can see all these dots are not recognizable characters, but you can see the 1Z gummy bear, 2Z chocolate drop, 3Z bear, B lemony brickets, whatever those are. And also, do you see how our data is telling us we're all in a line here because of those, th the way I named the descriptions? Now we're going to do the opposite, so we can open up a data stream and read it. So again, we're going to take the same file that we just wrote to, we're going to turn it into a file input stream object, which is going to feed to a buffered input stream, which will then feed to the data input stream. And that's going to be our in-file object. We set up some temporary variables to uh, hold the data that we're going to read. And notice the type has to match, so our price has to be a float, our quantity is an int, our description is a string, and then we're making our total, we're going to do a running total, so we made that also a float. Don't forget the Fs when you initialize your data, so it, we initialize it to 0.0F. Again, we got to surround everything with a try-catch. And I do have, I duplicated the code here, so don't duplicate it when you retype it. And we do a while loop, while everything is true. We read the float, we read the int, we read the, uh, the uh, string, which is UTF. And then we output using the format, system out format, which is very much like printf. And that outputs our, our variables. Now notice, these have to be read in the same order that they're packed in when we did our write. If you want to experiment with that, you can put these in different order and see what happens to your data. Also, this, this read float has to match the data type that you're reading from the file. If you put this into a read double, it won't work. And here's what your output looks like. Just to summarize real quickly, you should know why binary is valuable, why it's faster than text reading and writing, how to write primitive data types. You also have a really good example of using parallel arrays. And so I, we, we wrote to the file and we read from the file.